Examples of consumer and producer surplus. Example 1. Suppose that the supply curve for a product is given by P equals 15 plus 0.15Q, and the demand curve is given by P equals 20E to the negative 0.025Q, where P is the price and Q is the quantity. First, find the equilibrium point. Second, find the consumer and producer surplus. By graphing both curves on the same axis on a calculator, we can find where they intersect. You can do this on your calculator by using the graph function, and then use the trace function to find their intersection point. You'll find that they intersect at the x value of 8.31 and the y value of 16.25. Knowing that our quantity is represented on the x-axis and our y value is the price, we now have an equilibrium point of Q equals 8.31 and P equals 16.25. For the second part of our problem, we need to use the equilibrium price and quantity that we found in the first part. So since our equilibrium price is 16.25, that is our H of Q. That's our equation that we use as part of our calculation for producer and consumer surplus. Our demand equation, again, is 20 e to the negative 0.25q, and the supply equation, g of q, is 15 plus 0.15q. Therefore, we can write our corresponding consumer and producer surpluses. The consumer surplus, again, will be the integral from 0 to our equilibrium quantity, which was 8.31, and then we're going to do our demand equation, 20e to the negative 0.025q, minus our equilibrium price of 16.25. Now that we have our integral all set up, we can calculate the consumer surplus by plugging this into our calculator, and that'll give us 15.03. Our producer surplus, again, will integrate from 0 to the equilibrium quantity of 8.31, will now be our equilibrium price of 16.25 minus our supply function, which was 15 plus 0.15q. And again, if you're subtracting off more than one term, you need to use parentheses. Putting this all into our calculator gives us a final producer surplus of 5.21. For the next example, let's look at a table. So suppose the demand of some product is given in the first table that's listed here, and then the supply is given in the second table. We want to estimate the consumer and producer surplus just based on these tables. Now, the first thing we have to do here in order to estimate the consumer and producer surplus is figure out where we're at equilibrium. We're going to be equal at equilibrium when the quantity and price is the same for, do for both the consumer and producer. Notice that I've highlighted in red where this occurs on our particular tables. At the quantity of 300, the price is 23 for both the consumer and the producer. So this is our equilibrium point. Now, in order to estimate, we'll start with the consumer surplus. If you think back to chapter 5, when we estimate off of a table, we want to do a left-hand and a right-hand sum, and then average those two together. So let's start with our left-hand estimate. Now, for the first 100 units, we're going to take, again, top curve minus bottom curve. So our price at 100 points for the left-hand estimate is 52. So again, we're looking at the interval of 100. We pick the price on the left, which is 52. But we have to subtract off our equilibrium price of 23, because we're looking for the area between two curves. So we do 52 minus 23 times that 100 units. Now, for the next piece that we add on, we're looking between 100 and 200 units. So we pick the price on the left, because again, we're doing a left-hand estimate, and we do 39 minus the equilibrium price of 23 times the 100 units. Next, we're looking from units 200 to 300. Again, we pick the price that's on the left of 29, and subtract off the 23, and multiply that by the distance between the two quantities, which is 100 units. We add up all these pieces, and we get a left-hand estimate of 5,100. Now we also want to do a right-hand estimate. So again, 
For the first 100 units, we now pick the price on the right, which is 39, subtract off the equilibrium price of 23, and multiply by 100, because that's how many units we look over. Now from 100 to 200 units, we pick the price on the right, which is 29, subtract off our equilibrium price of 23, and multiply by 100, because again, that's our change in Q. And then from 200 to 300, we pick the price that's on the right, which is 23, we multiply that again by 100, and we get a total right estimate of 2200. So now, we want to average the left and right estimate. So we take 5100 plus 2200 and divide by 2, and that's going to give us our best estimate of 3650, 3650. That's going to be our consumer surplus based on this table. And again, we're only looking from 0 up to the equilibrium point, so we don't need to use the 4 and 500 on this table. We do something similar for producer surplus. So now here, remember producer surplus is the price minus what we get on the supply function. So, when we do our left-hand estimate, we're now using the second table. For the first 100 units, for our left-hand estimate, we pick the price on the left. But now, we're going to do equilibrium price minus supply price, because again, it's the equilibrium price that's the curve on top. So 23 minus 2, and then we multiply by the number of units, which is 100. You can see that equation down on the bottom here. From Q equals 100 to 200, again we pick the price on the left, which is 9. So we do 23 minus 9 times 100 units. And then from 200 to 300, again we pick the price on the left. So we do 23 minus 16 times 100 units. When we put those all together, we get an estimate of a left-hand estimate of 4,200. We also want to do a right-hand estimate. So now we'll pick the price on the right each time. So for the first 100 units, we pick the price on the right of 9. So we do 23 minus 9 times 100. From 100 to 200, we pick the price on the right, which is 16. We do 23 minus 16 times 100. And then from 200 to 300, we pick the price on the right, which is 23 minus 23 times 100. When we add those all up, we get 2100. Again, we want to average the left and the right hand sums. So we do 4200 plus 2100 and divide by 2, and that's going to give us a producer surplus of 3150. So that is how we estimate consumer and producer surpluses on tables.